Hello, this is Model Fun. Today I want to show you the second model I built for my best World War II fighters collection. After the Hellcat, which you could see in the previous video, I built this Messerschmitt BF 109 G6 from Revel. Um, let's see how it goes and also let me know in the comments what I should build next. This set is not new, it was released in 2013. I decided to build and buy this one as uh, I saw a few positive reviews and secondly because uh, I think it's the cheapest BF109 uh, in this scale on the market. So in the box you, you will find 13 sprues with plastic parts and 3 with clear parts and regarding the quality, I think the cockpit has some nice details. Um, there are no parts for the engine, so we are not going to do this. One, the engine here, um, fuselage and wing surface lack rivets. And I think it's quite simplified, uh, but it's okay. Apart from that, you have an old Revel style instruction and decals. In total, we have. 182 parts uh, but um, you need to know that we have two versions of the airplane here late and, and early version so some parts will not be used uh, depending on of the choice if you decide to, to build a late version or, or the early version you have separate decals for them I decided to build the late version the one uh, you can see on the box, box art uh, so yeah, let's get this going. Starting from the interior in step number one, I face a small challenge. There is only four parts in this step, but each one is placed on a different sprue. I have no idea why it is designed this way. Oh well. Anyway, I think the cockpit is quite nice in this model. I painted it all with Vallejo basalt grey mixed with a white color to make it a bit lighter. Decals for the control panel were placed with a decal set and decal fix solution. But next time I will probably cut the decal, this decal uh, into pieces because uh, the placement on the clocks of the clocks is not not right. Mm, the worst piece in this kit is the target finder. You need to curve this part from the plastic as it is, it is so poorly done um, and it is not clear as well. Well, I think this is the worst part of the cockpit also. For a change, part number 14, where you leave the transparent section of the pipe unpainted, is nice and gives the cockpit some special feature that looks cool. Yeah, so I finished the cockpit uh, with Vallejo steel and dry brush technique to imitate the usage marks on some parts and on the floor. And in the end, I added some dark wash also to bring up the details. Fuselage is built from several parts and some require attention before we put them in place, um, but there is no issue with the feet um, at all. Wings assembly looks a bit complicated, but all parts fits good. Uh, when painting the coolers, I used a dry brush uh, after the black paint was dry uh, to add some metal effect. Uh, I think it just looks, looks better. Uh, all glued together with help of clamps and tape. Um, despite the good fit, there were minor gaps. 
uh, that I filled with Tamiya putty. After sanding the putty and masking already painted spots, uh, I have covered the whole model with Vallejo primer. And this way I found few spots where I had to work with, uh, with the putty a bit more. Uh, after done that I sprayed the primer again um, and this time you know I think the result was okay so yeah and usually um, I use this time when the primer dries to to mask the canopy and to do that I use thin masking tape around the edges and a wider one or the masking fluid to fill bigger parts Pre-shading was done with Vallejo black and after that I sprayed a few spots with Vallejo steel color as here I will make some chipping later. On the steel color when it, it is dry I sprayed a thin layer of hairspray. Underside and both sides of the fuselage were painted with Vallejo light blue mixed with the drop of Vallejo white. The propeller cap has a very vivid green color, um, as I do not have paint like this, uh, I mixed two Vallejo paints to get a similar result. Uh, wings and upper part of the fuselage were painted with Vallejo RLM 75 and Vallejo RLM 74. Uh, same colors were used for mottling, the only difference is this uh, before I done the mottling uh, I diluted uh, these paints with thinner a bit more. Uh, this BF109 version is quite colorful and uh, on the tail uh, we have a yellow and black stripe and we also have decals for this included in the kit but I decided to paint it uh, these spots are quite big and I was afraid that Tickle will not uh, you know, do the work. Uh, one tip from me here before the yellow color is applied I used white to give it a better base. Uh, the same yellow is on the wing tips and uh, you know the procedure is the same. First white and then yellow. I used uh, Revel 15 yellow matte. The black stripe was done straight after masking the spot um, and this is the result. Uh, once all painting, painting is done uh, it is time for some chipping and I use water uh, that reacts with the hairspray. Um, and it like, let me uh, make some scratches with the brush uh, and a toothpick. Yeah, after that I, I think this is more or less done and I covered the whole model with Vallejo gloss varnish uh, to prepare for decals. To achieve more uh, realistic effect and uh, get rid of the film uh, from decals, I decided to cut German crosses into four pieces and apply it like you can see here um, and I think the result is worth the effort. Decals were placed and secured with another coat of gloss varnish. And uh, to add some dust and dirt spot, uh, spots I use oil, paint and wash. And once, once done, this uh, it's time for smaller parts like antennas, fuel tank and canopy that, uh, that I add at the end. Um, and the final step is to make an antenna wire. I've learned uh, the lesson from my Hellcat build and this time the antenna wire is made from the nylon thread uh, that you can extract from the socking, for example not from the copper wire that I used for Hellcat and I think this way it looks just better. Uh, 
take a look at decals number 25 and 26. I think uh, the instruction mixing them and um, actually where the instruction says it should be number 25 we should put 26 and other way around just just check it before you go um, decal number 41 in the instruction is probably uh, mixed with 62 actually well this is my guess because uh, i was uh, struggling finding number 41 and um, yeah, instead I used uh, 62 and I think this is the correct way. Um, I did not pay enough attention while placing decal number 45 and uh, here, just small tip from me, um, yeah, read the instruction because it says uh, that there is a smaller decal number 53 that need, needs to go first and then number 45 uh, goes. Um, and overlaps it a bit so um, it's it's quite important i i missed 53 and i didn't put it at all um decal number 47 actually i didn't find uh this lock where where it should be on the model maybe i covered it with putty and i i, I didn't notice i don't know another tip when I was looking for a, for a kit of BF109 uh, uh, that I can buy, uh, I found a lot of different ones and I didn't know what to choose. Uh, but finally I found scalemates.com and if you do not know this website, I recommend it as you can find a lot of information about every kit you can find on the market. It helps with the decision, uh, so yeah. Um, Last one, uh, flaps placement. Like here, if, if the model um, offers the option to position uh, flaps and other parts as we want, uh, and you are not sure what is right position to choose, I suggest to search for the real life examples uh, and reference. For this model, I have found this picture and I decided to replicate it. This time, I want to take you to a special place. This is the Aviation Museum close to the place where I live. I found this Messerschmitt BF 109G6 here. And this is the real plane uh, that was built in May 1944 with the serial number 163306. And it was used in a training unit. The plane flown by, by Ernst planers fell into the lake soon after takeoff in the early morning of uh, May 28th, 1944 and in the year 2000 it was recovered from the lake and restored by the Polish Eagles Foundation um, and now you can you can visit the museum and see it. BF109 is a true legend so a um, few facts, it was operative before uh, World War II and tested in action during the Spanish Civil War. Um, it was in service throughout the whole World War II uh, and constantly modified, uh, served not only as a fighter but also as a bomber escort, as a fighter bomber, night fighter, ground attack fighter uh, and reconnaissance aircraft. The total number of BF-109 build is almost 34,000, which makes this machine the most produced aircraft fighter in history. Finally, I have my BF109 ready. Uh, despite of some issues with the parts and decal placement, I have enjoyed the build a lot. I think this is not the easiest kit to build, uh, but when I look at it now, I'm happy with the result. Of course, I already see a few things that I could have done better or different, 
but overall I'm happy this model joins my collection and I hope you like it as well. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, if you like the video please subscribe and make sure you don't know you do not miss the next one as uh, the next one will be about Supermarine Speedfire. So guys thank you for watching and see you 